Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with another card and video using some of the newest Be Creative release from Simon Says Stamp, as well as one of the new products, colors, whatever, uh, the Lost Shadow Distress color that was released three weeks ago now, two weeks, whenever it was. It's here, hooray. Simon had sent this to me and I actually had it sitting here for a few days, just haven't had the time to, you know, get to all the things, but I have now opened the package. It's such a pretty light gray and it's not, um, it's not a warm, you know, that brown tone, like pumice stone. It's not like a blue tone, like weathered wood. It is its own. And it's not even a lighter version of hickory smoke either. Like we needed this. I have been wanting a light gray for years. So perfect. And I was like, ooh, this will be perfect for no line coloring because usually we use antique linen distress for no line coloring and it works great. But my problem with antique linen is I, I often have a really hard time seeing it, even if I stamp it more than once. So I, and I also don't do a whole lot of no line coloring, but I was looking at this stamp set, this is the, or stamp, this is the bunch of balloons cling background stamp. And the first thing I wanted to do with it, I was like, I need to stamp this and do no line coloring. So that's what I did. So I've also got the stamp and stencil mat. This is also new from Simon. They partnered with Brutus Monroe. It's the same idea as the stick and stamp mat that I have shown and used and have multiples of. Um, this one, just a little bit different grid lines, you know, and branded with Simon and Brutus Monroe. So I put that into my Misty. I stuck a piece of Canson XL watercolor paper in there. I had already um, taken out the foam insert out of my Misty and put the bunch of balloons background stamp in there. And then I inked up the stamp with uh, the Lost Shadow Oxide ink. With this, it doesn't matter if you use the Distress ink or the Oxide ink when it comes to no line coloring. I just went with the Oxide because I wanted it to just kind of sit on top of the cardstock a little bit more. Um, I thought I was worried that I might not be able to see that very well either, but it shows up perfectly. Um, yeah, you guys can see it. I can see it. That's all that matters. So for the watercoloring, I pulled up my Gonzai Tommy watercolor set and I went with a lot of the same colors. The last video I did using this set, there's something about these specific shades that I'm just immediately drawn to when I like open this palette. They're just, they're so pretty. So I kind of went somewhat monochromatic especially as there is a lot of layering with this and while I have no problem you know layering colors and how to avoid getting things muddy this is what I've been talking about sometimes is if you're wanting to experiment with even ink blending and ink smushing or layering colors all those things if you go with like colors at least to start off with it's so much easier. So, you know, all pinks, all different shades of pinks or pinks and purples work great together. Pinks and blues, because they'll at least make purple. You know what I mean? Whereas if you did like all rainbow colors, you could end up with a muddy mess. So I had left the watercolor paper on the stick and stamp mat at first because it was like, oh, this will just hold it in place like a watercolor, which it would have been fine for that, except I'm impatient and I want to dry each of these faster. You need each whatever you've watercolored with something like this, you want each little section, AKA each little balloon to be dry before you paint anything around or over it. Because if it's still wet, everything's just gonna start bleeding into each other and you're not gonna have any definition. It's just gonna be a mess. So you either need to just have patience and let it dry or remove it from the stick and stamp mat and stick it on a hard board like I did here. Because I wanna speed it up with my heat, heat tool and the stick and stamp mat is not heat resistant. I mentioned this in a video not too long ago. I melted one of mine because I wasn't using my brain. Although in the live chat on Simon's live video, I was like, I tested it. <laughs> it was market research, man, not me just being an idiot. Anyway, <laughs> have it on my hardboard. It's not the hardboard and the like, and I use pixie tape because again, I wasn't using my brain. I should use my painter's tape, but I didn't want to paint or tape around the perimeter of this because it's a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece. And I wanted to do a full A2 shaker with it. So I was kind of just making life more difficult for myself, but really in the end, it was fine. 
So I've got it on my little hardboard, uh, which it can handle heat, obviously. And I just go in with these different colors and a paintbrush and paint. Simple, honestly, just simple. You know, these are simple shapes. And the only thing is because these are Gonzai Tommy watercolors, if you're not aware, Gonzai Tommy watercolors are kind of the in-between between watercolors and gouache. Gouache being the in-between from watercolors to acrylic paint. Gouache is much more opaque, but not as opaque as acrylic paint. And these Gonzai Tombies are kind of between gouache and watercolors. So they, watercolor great, obviously, they are more opaque, which is fine. But doing something like this, obviously I'm kind of losing some of the, the transparency of it all. However, the colors are beautiful and I'm not too worried about it. But if you really want that more transparent look, either go with straight watercolors or you could use distress inks would look gorgeous. Um, there's a million things out there. I just, my head was like, I just had to do these colors. It's just what I wanted to do. So once I was done um, coloring all these in, I dried it all with my heat tool, made sure it was dry. And I took uh, one of my Copic multi-liners. This is a really tiny one. It's like the 0.05. And I traced the balloon strings. You could honestly leave it. You could, I could still see them. Um, even after all the watercoloring and whatnot, I could still see that lost shadow that I had stamped it with. And that's just a much more subtle look. But I was just, I don't know. I just wanted to emphasize the balloon strings a little bit more. So I just drew right over it with the Copic Multiliner. Doesn't need to be perfect. And once I have all of that done, of course I'm going to add splatter. Like just just cuz so went along filled all these not filled in traced all these little balloon strings with that Copic multi-liner and then I'm gonna pull out my splat box and I'm gonna use a couple of those watercolors specific this purple one I love this color I took some put it on my acrylic block and at first I was splattering with the one of the paint brushes I really don't like splattering pa with paint brushes anymore like fan brush all the way so much better I just I much prefer regardless. It just way better results. So that's what I did. I let that splatter dry and then I grabbed my fan brush and I also grabbed my Amsterdam uh, white uh, acrylic fluid paint, whatever it's called. I'll have a link to it. It's actually sitting right in front of me. It's, it's, I always forget exactly what it's called. Amsterdam titanium white acrylic ink. Anyway, Splattered that with a fan brush, and then I took some more of the one of the Gonzai Tommy colors that I had watercolored with. Splattered that as well, because why not? And then again, let everything dry. Because of how I did everything, it's very warped. You can do multiple things to flatten this out. If you've got the patience, once it's dry, again, you want it to be dry, put it under a stack of books, let it sit overnight. You know, something heavy and flat, let it sit, it'll flatten it. Another option is to run it through your die cut machine between a couple pieces of copy paper. Run it through like you would if you were die cutting it. That will flatten it as well. This option, using my mink or a laminator, is the fastest. <laughs> the only thing you want to avoid, though, if you've heat embossed an, a background or like done any heat embossing, you do not want to run it through your mink machine or a laminator with heat. That will remelt the embossing powder, and then the rollers will literally press that you know, embossing, you'll, it'll be smeared and flattened and just not a good time. So if you've heat embossed anything, either have the patient stick it under some books or do run it through the die cut machine between some copy paper. I only recommend the copy paper unless you happen to have a couple of brand new die cutting plates that are still pristine. Because if you run it through without the copy paper and you have all the marks on your um, cutting plates, those will press into that as well. And you don't want that either. So there's some, there's some ideas, but this was the fastest. So I ran it through my mink, flattened it right out, which was just perfect. You know, makes my life a little easier. And then of course, I'm going to turn this into a flat shaker. And I just happened to have this piece of leftover packaging from my last video, because I showed me cutting it down for the last shaker card I made. And this was just big enough to fit on a full like A2 panel. And I'll have a link to that video at the end of this one. I will have a link to the shaker playlist. I've done an entire playlist with flat shaker cards because I've done them all different shapes and sizes. And 
yeah, there's like a couple dozen videos or something like that. So you guys can check those out if you're interested. But basically, you just use a strong adhesive. I'm using Simon's Terrific Tape. I've got that packaging on the front. I put the tape along the back perimeter of the panel, fold down and seal up three sides. And then the fourth side, I get the tape into place. But before I actually seal it up, you got to fill it. So not only do I like mixing like embossing paste and whatnot, I also like mixing sequin mixes. I should start calling myself like a mixologist. I just don't, you know, really do that with alcohol. I just do it with craft supplies. So a couple different sequin mixes. The first one I used, I don't think is available anymore, but I'll link to Simon's sequin mixes because it was a Simon mix. This was the Hawaiian sunset mix. It came out forever ago and I still had some left and I was like, ooh, the colors are perfect. But Again, I don't think that one's still available. However, the other ones are. The ones I added to it were the Fresh Fig uh, little confetti from Trinity Stamps and some Studio Caudia Sugar Glitz Discs. Love those. I've been hoarding them. They're flat and like full of glitter and so they're just, they're beautiful. Love them. <laughs> so I mixed them up back and forth between my little trays, threw them into the shaker, sealed up the four side. And then I just use my scissors and cut off the little corners that kind of, after folding it over, they hang over the edge. So I just trim those off to clean everything up. So now I've got my flat shaker card front. And then while the bunch of balloons background was still in my Misty, I took my card base, which will be a top folding A2 size note card. And I put post-it tape at the score line so that the stamp doesn't go past the score line. And then I inked up the stamp with Victorian Velvet Distress Oxide ink. I could have used the Lost Shadow again, that would have been fine. But Victorian Velvet just went with the colors on the front. So stamp that onto the inside of the card. And then once I'm done with the stick and stamp or stamp and stencil mat, I put the little cover that comes with it. You wanna keep that unless you don't mind like it's up to you know if you want to just keep it in your misty and not cover it i it needs to be covered for me otherwise i'm going to drop it on the floor it's going to pick up lint and god knows what else you know <clears throat> i work in my garage it gets it can get pretty crazy in here so i put the cover back on it's good to go i put the foam insert back in my misty and then i'm using sentiments from the cz design big old birthday stamp set love so i took a scrap of white cardstock and i inked up the little companion sentiment with that victorian velvet oxide ink and then while i before i like heat embossed next sentiment i put the inside of the card back in my misty here and just lined up this great big sentiment from that set onto the center inside of the card and i'm going to stamp that with versifying claire nocturne ink let's get that inked up stamped onto the inside of the card and then I can set that aside and let that dry because the oxide ink takes a little bit of time to dry and the Versafine clear inks also take a little bit of time to dry. So set that aside to dry, grabbed a scrap of black cardstock, put that in my Misty, used my anti-static powder tool, inked up another sentiment from that big old birthday stamp set with clear embossing ink and then covered that with Simon's detail white embossing powder, tapped off the excess. I'm going to melt this with my heat tool, making sure to tilt it back and forth that there's no, because there was a little, little tiny greeny area that I just about missed. So got that with my heat tool, let that cool off for a few seconds, wiped off the excess anti-static powder with my microfiber cloth. And then I'm going to die cut these with the coordinating wafer dies, just taping those into place with little bits of washi tape so that they don't um, shift when I run them through my die cut machine. So get both of those little wafer dies taped into place and then I'm going to die cut these and then to adhere them to the shaker panel, I'm just going to use that terrific tape again. Um, sometimes I'll use glossy accents. It depends on the type of sentiment. It's usually more like a word wafer die, you know, that you couldn't add like a t like adhesive like this to that I would use something like glossy accents because you want something super strong so that this doesn't just fall off you know so tape those into place closed up my card base and then to adhere this to the card base I just use score tape because I've got wider widths of it so I put pieces on the back of this panel 
peeled those off, adhered it to the card front, and that finished off the card. I pair well, I paired it with a black envelope because again, I kind of like doing that. It's sort of fun when the envelope looks kind of just black, dull, sort of boring, and then you open it up and it's like, ooh, it's a shaker card with like glittery shaker bits in it. How fun! So, gotta love the shaker bits. It's the best part. And as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have a supply list. I'll link to all the supplies I used. You can check that out below if you are interested. And as always, thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, for commenting, subscribe if you haven't. I'd very much appreciate it. And I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.